All right, now we're joined by Tim Burgess, who is rep uh, asking us to vote yes on Seattle Proposition 1. So go ahead with up to five minutes to tell us why you vote yes. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. I'm here urging the 36th District to uh, urge members and constituents in your area to vote yes on the Families, Education, Preschool, and Promise Levy. This levy actually takes two expiring levies, the Families and Education Levy, which we've had every seven years since 1990, that expires at the end of this year in December, and the Seattle Preschool Program Levy, which was a four-year pilot project, it also uh, expires at the end of December. So this new levy that we'll vote on in November takes those two measures, renews them, and enhances them. It's a seven-year levy that is property tax-based, and it will support the continued expansion of the Seattle Preschool Program, which is off to an outstanding, excellent start, and continues our K-12 investments uh, in our elementary schools, middle schools, and high schools to help all kids in Seattle, but primarily children living in poverty and children of color with academic enrichment and support. And then it adds Mayor Durkin's Seattle Promise, which is the two free years of college for Seattle high school graduates uh, to use at Seattle Colleges, our community college network. So that's the essence of the levy. As I mentioned, it uh, renews the two other levies that are expiring and then enhances them. So the median Seattle homeowner, that's one person, I guess, who owns a home, uh, will pay approximately $9 more per month if this levy uh, is adopted uh, by the voters. Half of the property uh, homeowners will pay less, half will pay more, but the median is about $9 uh, a month. Um, let me just mention a few things about where the levy is focused. So the preschool program, which currently serves uh, about 1,700 students in Seattle, uh, is in its fourth and final year, this academic year, and so that will stop unless this levy is renewed. The K-12 uh, investments are primarily used for academic enrichment programs, after school programs, double dosing on top on subjects that uh, kids need more help with, and all of our school-based health clinics in our middle schools and our high schools are paid by this city government property tax. And then the Seattle Promise, which is for uh, graduates of high school to use at community college if they wish to do that. So that's the levy that's before the voters and I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. Great, so questions, two minute answers, if people have time. Let's see if there are any board members first, uh, Sophia and then Robert. Um, so regarding the Seattle Promise, um, I've heard some, um, uh, some, some people, um, they were unhappy that that's not also focused on the most at-need communities. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, so uh, the question is, is it needs-based, basically? And it's not to begin with. Uh, there has been a lot of discussion about that, and uh, I think that'll continue to be discussed in the future, uh, especially as the program grows and more kids are taking advantage of it there may be a needs uh, assessment added to that. But at the current time, it does not have that. Robert. So there was uh, some discussion when this was first being proposed back in the spring that uh, potentially money would be uh, taken away or cut to the K-12 portion of this. And there's specifically some schools that received letters that their family support workers were going away or other things were going away. I know the council did some tweaking to that, but can you answer, uh, this renewal as compared to the one currently in place, how does that affect the funding that goes to the K-12 schools and how does that affect things like family support workers and other programs that are currently being funded? The council um, did make a change on the family support workers. They are fully funded. In fact, it's increased beyond what the current levy does. Um, I think there is a long-term plan by the city and this levy takes a couple of steps in that direction to uh, withdraw city support from academic activities that fit the definition of basic education. The theory being the school district will pick up those costs because of the McCleary settlement and their own uh, levy, which now is restricted to academic enrichment activities. 
and the city will pick up costs that are not funded by anybody else, like the health clinics, the nurses, preschool, Seattle Promise, those types of things. But that, that is not going to happen in this seven-year levy. There may be some movement in that direction, but I know that the mayor and the council and the school district wanted that to be a long-term uh, phasing of that uh, change. So it'll start, but it's not going to be dramatic. Do you have a question? Uh, yes. I've been trying to find out what the cost per student is in the preschool program. And um, and recently I read an article on Boston's program, which is iconic and covers 68% of their eligible kids. And their program seems to be significantly less expensive than ours. Well, Boston runs about $14,000 per student, and ours is just around $13,000. Okay, I had a great so, $18,000. Um, yeah. No. Tracy? Um, the, the new levy um, will cover about 1,700 children in, in K through 12. What, how, what number do we need if we wanted to serve everyone in the city? The new preschool levy will cover up to 2,500 students per year. It's serving 1,700 students this year. Okay. Yes. So, uh, so that's the preschool program, and that's for three and four-year-olds. You know, the goal is universal preschool, and depending on who you talk to around the United States, it's either 70% or 80% of three and four-year-olds enrolled. We know we'll never get 100%. Right. Some parents keep their kids at home, some put them in private uh, preschool environments, whatever. Um, so. Somewhere when we reach 70 or 80 percent, I think we'll be able to say that we've really reached universal preschool. The K-12 investments serve thousands of kids. All the, all the kids in Seattle public schools are eligible for those programs. And depending on the programs, like the health clinics are used by all students if they wish, the academic enrichment programs are focused on kids who are struggling academically. Two, <laughs> the other people don't. Um, uh, the the first one, or the, maybe this, this might not be a simple one. It's a, if you don't know, that's fine. You had said that the that it would increase nine dollars a month more. Um, do you know what the cost of the two combined levies are? So yes. what does it increase those from? Yes. So right now, um, a, the median Seattle homeowner is paying about one hundred and thirty-six dollars a year, and it goes up to two hundred forty-nine dollars. And if you divide that monthly, that's just just around nine dollars more per month. And the second question I had is that you had said that th there would be programs that are that are focused on uh, children living in poverty and in the most needs. Um, can you talk a little bit about how they're going to how are they going to ensure that? Like what what is sort of the nature of sure. those programs? Sure. So the way the levy in the K twelve portion of it works is that individual schools, elementary schools, middle schools, or high schools, apply to the city for funds. And the way they apply is they present um, a proposal to city government and they identify the students they want to target in their academic enrichment programs. They identify for the city how they are going to measure the effectiveness of those programs. And then they compete with other schools that are also applying. And there's a panel of city people and then outside uh, people from the, from the city, including education uh, and academic experts who evaluate these proposals and then award these grants. And then they are monitored through the life of the levy to make sure that they are achieving the objectives that each individual school set. So it's a partnership between the individual schools and the city government that make that decision about who we're going to target, what we're going to do, uh, and how we're going to measure the effectiveness of those programs. Let me give you an example. So a lot of the middle schools will apply for tutoring programs because they want, uh, there's a group called University Tutors. They're uh, college students and grad students from all the four-year schools in Seattle, and there's literally hundreds of them who go into our middle schools and high schools and help kids with academic uh, 
activities during the school day and after school. Uh, and a lot of schools apply for grants so that they can bring those tutors into their into their classrooms. So can you answer whether any of this money would be able to go to charter schools? I hear different things about that from different, even council members who aren't sure. Some say, oh, it won't. Some say, well, it's not clearly prevented in the levy, but it's not said yes. Can you provide some clarity on it? Because that's one of the questions I get all the time about it. Yeah, I've heard that discussion a lot, and I, I don't know the final answer. I know there's legal review. There's a case, as things I think you know, in front of the Supreme Court right now mm -hmm. on that topic. Um, so I think that will be resolved sometime in, in the future. Okay. Additional questions? Uh, Mary, do you have one? Um, using the numbers you gave us, it's about a 55% increase. Yeah, I think Which, it's closer to about 60, 63 or so. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I agree with yeah. you. That's a big increase. And, and um, how are you going to sell it to the voters? So one thing I think that Seattle voters want to do is invest more in the children of Seattle, especially uh, our young children. So we know that a, a child's brain is essentially 90% formed by the time they're five. Now that doesn't relate to what knowledge they have. It's, it's the infrastructure of the brain, mm -hmm. the roadways and the intersections and all those things. Um, and so we know that investing early in a child's life, like preschool, is going to produce huge dividends. Almost 60% of this levy is dedicated to preschool expansion, the rest to K-12 and the Seattle Promise uh, program for college. Um, you know, in preparing the levy, uh, the council and the group that's running the campaign did a lot of polling and tested a lot of the interest of Seattle voters and where they wanted to go with this and um, I think we're fairly confident that there's strong support to continue to invest in education especially uh, the way the city does it with very specific measurable outcomes and accountability standards and um, you know it, it, just later this month the third year evaluation of the Seattle preschool program will come out uh, I haven't seen the specifics yet but we're told by the researchers that it's phenomenally good uh, that our preschool is performing on par with with Boston and other cities that have been doing it for 12 14 years and we're only in year three right now just starting year four so uh, I think the voters of Seattle are smart and you're right it is a significant increase it's not a particularly attractive tax but it's the one that we have available to us. And so um, I, I'm confident the voters will say yes. Additional questions? Jason? <clears throat> Why is uh, pre-K so important? Preschool is important, especially for kids living in poverty and children of color who often show up at their kindergarten first day of kindergarten already behind and it is a really steep climb for those kids uh, when they're starting already behind and every child in Seattle deserves a strong and fair start and we know from the evidence some 40 years of research now on preschool that that is a super wise investment and can change life outcomes for kids I mean it's that the benefits of preschool if it's done well are irrefutable. Thank you. Time for a couple more questions. I have a question about the Seattle Promise. You were talking about two year, two free years of college for every high school graduate. Is that just locally or um, Seattle high school Seattle graduates? High school. Yes. Um, so they can use that those funds here in Washington or Seattle. just Seattle? with the Seattle yeah. colleges. Seattle, oh, Seattle colleges. Yes. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Who knows what it'll look like in the future, long term, um, but that's what it is to start with. Is there enrollment capacity for that, for the Seattle College? Uh, the Seattle Colleges, is they're really high on this program. Okay. Uh, the chancellor there is a huge proponent of this. I think, I think they have the capacity. 
I have one. So that's a 60% increase. Um, how much of that increase is an increase of the K through 12, and how much of that increase is an increase for the pre-K? I don't have that offhand. I can just tell you that of the new levy, um, almost 60% is preschool, okay. about 36% is K-12, and about 6% is the Seattle Promise, so pretty small amount actually in the Seattle Promise. Okay. Do you happen to recall the size of the original two separate levies? Yes. Um, the preschool levy was $58 million over four years, and the families and education levy was $235 million over seven years. So it's a huge boost in okay. preschool. And so that the change in the K through 12 is what you were saying with, um, with McCleary and the schools having to fill that gap, basically. Yeah, there is a slight reduction in the K-12 investment with this levy as the city begins shifting to the programs that aren't paid for by anybody else. Good. Additional questions? What, what percentage of eligible kids are covered versus how many there are that would be eligible? Okay. Is this about Seattle Promise? Yeah. The college program? No, not the Promise. Oh. Right. Right. And, and I have a question on the Promise. Uh, we have a lot of kids that maybe drop out, but they get a GED, so they're not eligible for this. Um, I don't know that. That's a great question. I don't know that. Sorry. If they got the GED through Seattle Public Schools, maybe, because they'd essentially be a graduate, but I, I don't know that. Mary? school is full and there's about 1700 kids enrolled now okay so every seat is taken that was offered yes basically. and there there's a waiting list mm -hmm. and this levy will allow that 1700 to grow to 2500 mm -hmm. per year and have they been successful in getting participants from all income levels in the program yes it's free to kids up to 300% of the federal poverty level mm -hmm. Head Start is free up to 110% of the poverty level. So we made a conscious decision to help more middle class, lower middle class families. Um, there are about, and I'm guessing at these numbers because I don't remember, but about 20% or somewhere between 15 and 20% of the kids that are enrolled are paying on the sliding scale. Because if you have over 300% of family, 300% of family income, Compared to the federal poverty level, you will pay on a sliding scale. So it's attracting mostly low-income kids uh, in our city. Probably one more question, Jason. Do you have yes, I do. Uh, Boston has the most experience with this. It sounds like. I was curious if anybody's done any studies when the community invests in the health and education of our children, what the lifetime earnings and then the tax base or the, maybe the ROI would be. Yeah. So there's a great study from the University of Chicago by James Ekman, <laughs> Nobel Prize winning economist that dives into that a lot about early learning investments. And he will argue that for every dollar spent, there's gonna be somewhere between seven and nine dollars returned on that dollar, either through economic growth, uh, taxes, reduced government expenditures for social services, whatever. So he makes a very strong case for the economic value of investing in preschool. Um, actually, the first preschool in the United States at scale was the state of Oklahoma, which we don't nice. often look to as a progressive <laughs> leader. And the second state was Georgia. Uh, Boston's program started about 14 years ago. Uh, it's highly successful. We modeled our program after Boston's and our uh, evaluation scores are, in some cases, exceeding Boston and others right behind where they're at today. So I think doing that in three years compared to their 14 years of experience, we're, we're off to a great start here. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, we are about out of time. If you want to take 30 seconds for a closing statement. Well, thank you. I, again, I think you know the issue. I think it's really smart to invest in the kids of Seattle, especially kids that don't often make it for a variety of reasons, and they are special to us. We want to make sure that they have a strong and fair start, and voting yes on this levy will allow, allow us to continue to do that. So thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Thank you.